one-man justice squad, great criminal defense attorney Jeff Gold. What about that, Jeff? What's a jury doing with that? I mean, because you've got this shattered woman, Rachel, on the stand, and she's being duped as she's the, the foil here in this ruse by her own father a couple of days after her mom's death. Well, you know, I mean, look, there is a difference between him having a mistress and him killing his wife. So if the defense is able to say, OK, look, he had a cover, he, you know, he didn't want everybody to know, he didn't want his daughter to know, fine. The fact that a lot of this is happening right after she's dead, that he's talking to her and it, it makes her queasy that he's talking to her about being a single man so close, you know, after the death. Uh, that testimony that we don't know if she's going to render uh, uh, or how she's going to address it uh, when it comes to her telling her roommates, the uh, mistress, telling her roommates that she knows some ways to kill uh, the wife. Well, you know, those kinds of things are, are very salient. I mean, there's another mistress out there uh, that, that says that the doctor uh, told her he could kill somebody by giving him a shot of potassium and making it look like a heart attack. Well, when you add stuff like this together, it reminds you of a case, Drew Peterson, where a sergeant from Bolingbrook in Illinois uh, was alleged to have killed his uh, wife by having her drowned in a bathtub, and for many years it was ruled an accident. So here you have a case where for a year nothing happened too. But then statements can be used to take facts that are otherwise ambiguous and have a jury believe one set versus the other. These kinds of things can be put together. The mistress is necessary. And remember one thing, too. She's been convicted of fraud yep. in this case for allegedly, uh, well, not allegedly, she's convicted. convicted uh, she yeah. Admittedly, right? She made a plea agreement for uh, um, using the identity of a 16-year-old to cover up who she was, the 16-year-old daughter. So, you know, look, this is a big mess. She needs to be put up there. If the jury understands a little bit of this, the state gets a little something out of her. Yeah. Martin McNeil, bad guy, but is it enough? Or really, how far does it go to get a guilty verdict concerning the murder of his wife? All right, more coming up. Again, back with us, criminal defense attorney Jeff Gold. Let's talk about Rachel's testimony, specifically there. Is that a win for the prosecutor, that she gets that out there, that he should be distraught instead when Gypsy's around, he's pretty happy. Mike, in essence, she's saying he was in love with her. He was goo-goo-eyed with her. When he saw her, he was happy. He hardly paid attention, uh, or maybe he was just uh, putting on an act as to the funeral otherwise. But when he saw her, he was in love. That's what the state's theory is, that he did this for love. He did this to get rid of the wife. Uh, you know, uh, there's a statement that... Uh, uh, that uh, maybe the victim said to her daughter, if uh, anything ever happens to me, uh, it's your dad, <laughs> okay? We've heard that before. Yep. Nicole Brown Simpson said that. Uh, 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 Kathy uh, Peterson in the Drew Peterson case said that. You know, these voices from the grave, these daughters are haunted, haunted by their mother's voices. Uh, and they, all they can see is uh, their dad smiling in love with his mistress. Yeah. Oh, let, let's talk about Rachel's demeanor on the stand. Um, you know, she's, she's shattered. She's emotional. Uh, in some places, she's kind of all over the place. She's combative and things like that. Was she effective? Do, do jurors, do they feel for her? Do they think she's erratic? What, what do you think, Jeff? I think they do feel for her. I think it's the best testimony for the uh, state so far. Remember, this is a circumstantial case. They do not have the cause of death. That may be the end of the case, just like in Casey Anthony. Without that, you may have nothing. But this is how they're making their case, circumstantial. And when the daughter of a defendant gets on the stand and in essence says, my dad did it, You've got a good witness because the children uh, uh, usually stand by the parents. There are a couple exceptions we talked about earlier. But when uh, 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 the, the child gets on the stand and picks one parent, the state has something to talk about. Yeah, because, you know, early on in her testimony, I mean, she broke everybody's heart, I think, when she's talking about a relationship with her dad. And she's like, gosh, he was my best friend. You know, and I think that was very authentic, sure. you know, to the point where, like, wait a minute, she loved him. She doesn't, yeah, you know, she didn't have any kind of axe to grind against him. She loved him. That's exactly right. And then she's come to the conclusion he killed mom. So now she doesn't like him so much. Yeah, uh, exactly. Do you, is she the kind of testimony, the kind of person on the stand that, that sticks with the jury because of the emotions and the ride that she took all of us on? Yes, it, it does stick with the jury. I just still question whether in the end, at the end of the day, 
Can it overcome mm -hmm. a fundamental flaw like we don't know what caused the death? That's what the problem is. But it was good testimony. It is emotional testimony. It will stick with the jury. It's the best the state has. All is right. it enough, though? There you go. Yes, right. Three autopsies, not one expert saying homicide is manner of death. Much more coming up. Gypsy's set to take the stand. We'll have it.